for over 10 years now, one anime would crush the number one spot on my anime list and park its ass there. Gintama, Clanet, Steins Gate, Your Name, Fruits Basket, Monogatari all sat at the throne at one point, just to meet the same fate as everyone else. Full Metal Alchemist, a show made 13 years ago, would smack that shit to the bottom time and time again. What's so special about Full Metal Alchemist? How is it that every time a show surpasses it in rankings, this show pulls through? The truth is, they cheated. Yeah. Anytime a show passes it on my anime list, the fan base gets together and is like, fuck that show. But that ain't the whole story, is it? The truth is, Full Metal Alchemist isn't up there because it's objectively the best anime ever made, or just because the fan base downvotes anything else. It's there because 99% of people look at that and go, yeah, yeah. Not just because the fan base is retarded, and believe me. That was my first guess. Whether you like it or not, Full Metal Alchemist has been unofficially crowned the King of Shonen, and I intend to show you exactly why. Alchemy is the science that allows one to create nearly anything in exchange for something of equal value. Alchemists can remodel cars, create weapons, or even flames by harnessing the power of the world. If only I had this ability, oh. All right, three, two, one. Freeze! Put your hands where I can see- Oh. Mother of God. It's all made of cheese. Yes, I'm quite aware. But why would you- Shh. That's not the question you should be asking, officer. The question is what haven't I cheese? <laughs> The joke is that I used alchemy to turn everything into cheese. There's one fundamental restriction of alchemy, one that two brothers, Edward and Alphonse, crossed. They tried to bring back the dead. In the process, their bodies are stolen from them, and they venture out into the world to find a Philosopher's Stone, the one thing that can bypass equivalent exchange and get their bodies back. That's kind of what it's about. Full Metal Alchemist is like one of them clown napkins. <laughs> For most of the show, we're here in Amestris. It's got tons of German influences, like their names, Alphonse, Olivier, Biesenhauer, Führer, uh, ah, 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 ah! The Ishvalans are a proud people that barely scrape by to retain their culture and religion. Those from across the Eastern Desert, Qing, are extremely loyal to their houses and will do anything to find the origin of immortality. Ling Yao and Mei come to Amestris for that exact reason. I didn't have to Google any of this. Ishval, Amestris, and Qing swell with authenticity and culture, and it makes the world that much more believable when the author cares. She was amazed by how diverse Europe was during the Industrial Revolution. What the fuck country do they live in in the Rising of Shi? hero? Authenticity. That's what sets these worlds apart. But characters are your most dangerous tool in storytelling. Alex Armstrong had no idea serving his country would mean becoming a tool of indiscriminate death. Alex runs from that fate until he realizes that the only way he can atone for what he did in Ishval is to help Ed, Al, and the rest of the world. It took 29 episodes to piece that together. Ed and Al, their whole deal is that they want their bodies back. But as they dig deeper and deeper, they uncover a mountain of conspiracies that make them question the ethics of their journey. Is it right for us to pursue this thing when people around us are dying left and right? The characters are constantly evolving and adapting to the story every single episode, and the cogs start to turn. Any pause when someone speaks, every time their eyes dart around the room, you take notice. What's up with the nation's King Bradley, Roy Mustang, Scar, Greed, Olivier? That's a fucking panda, like, what the fuck? As a kid, the one episode of Full Metal Alchemist I ever saw was of course the Chimera episode, and if you haven't seen the Chimera episode, here's a quick spoiler for episode 4, okay? Skip ahead 10 seconds if you don't want to see it, this is your last chance. Ah, what a cute girl. Aw, what a cute dog. That person oh, hello, satanic beast. Have you seen a little that girl and a dog around? Edward. That person Edward. Oh, the bitch turned into a dog! So as a kid, I thought, this show is fucked up. Stay away from that one and watch Chowder. Shiga, shiga, shiga. Like, a medium amount. Watch a medium amount of chowder. Watching this episode as an adult, on the other hand, is like, oh, Show Tucker is there to completely alter your sense of alchemy. It saves numerous lives, but the ugly part is what it takes from people. If used from another angle, alchemy is disturbing. This lesson reforges the resolve of the Elric brothers and stays with them as a source of strength for the rest of the series. My source of strength is... Provolone. 
It feels as if every character matters. This guy influences the Elric brothers. The Elric brothers influence a fellow soldier. That soldier sets off a chain reaction that blows up wildly in scale and ends up influencing the entire story. You get the feeling that everyone is a domino piece being pushed along by some unseen enemy. Plot is where you make use of these characters. I've thought long and hard about how to use pretty words and shit to tell you how I feel about Full Metal's plot, but I think this visual here I made does a pretty good job. Here's a standard anime. You got your beginning, climax, and your ending. Full Metal Alchemist is pretty much the same. Oh, shit! Many anime tell a good story, but none exactly like Full Metal. What I demonstrated earlier was the power of scale. We start off small, two guys go on one simple adventure, then we discover how evil alchemy can get and the story grows. Arakawa wants you to ask questions, what is alchemy, what is the philosopher's stone, who did now work for, and every answer tightens the story's grip on you. The author knew exactly what she was doing every step of the way. Characters don't just fast travel places, you'll notice people in the background taking the train, or checking out a map. There's foreshadowing on the first episode that hints at the ending, and there's so many legendary moments in the show that are etched in anime culture because of it. Attack on Titan, Land of the Lustrous, Berserk, these are stories that combine an intimate knowledge of their characters with passionate, meticulous plotting. It elevates the writing from a good way to pass time to something that can make you feel like a Did I mention how good the fights are? <laughs> Alphonse is fighting a guy and gets his leg armor cut off. What do you think he does? I'll give you a second. He catches his foot, alchemies it into his sword, curves it around the bad guy, and flies around on a little fucking dragon. This is genius shit, and they don't even bring it up. It's just how they fight. Elaborate, flashy, and natural at the same time. The character design in the show is like, oh, sick. They made this character out of Italians. Unique. The character design is unique. You can actually tell characters apart. If you swap the hair on any two people, you'd still recognize them. You ever watch one of those videos where Japanese people try to guess the race of anime characters, but all the anime characters look the same, so they throw the wildest fucking guesses out there and don't even give a shit if it's right? Huh. You're fucking with me! In Full Metal, get this. Europeans actually look European. Ishvalans aren't just reskins of the white people. Asians look Asian. The music! Battle scares those that powerful band that you want playing behind your back before a battle. A new journey is a vibe that any anime could end on. Nice. Pretty. Just to get squashed by March of the Moving Dolls, listening to this feels like the enemy force is closing in on you from all directions. Full Metal Alchemist is full of magic. It has so many lighthearted moments. It's so encouraging. It's like someone bottled up an adventure and trapped it in a TV screen. While at the heart of it, it's a story about fighting fate, not compromising, and getting shit done at the same time. This alchemy, the ability to completely conquer your expectations every episode and turn that into excitement, is what cemented Full Metal at the top of my anime list for a decade now. The sprawling plot lines, deep understanding of the characters, and relatable motives make it unlikely that any anime will take the throne. Well, shit. Subscribe! I do stuff like this all the time. And leave a comment, I reply to those. But first, a word from Nord. This video's sponsor, YouTube, has been robbing me fucking blind lately, so this stuff keeps the videos coming. I have to Google some weird stuff to make these videos, as you've probably guessed. In fact, I had to Google be Nazi for a joke in this very video, to which there was an absurd amount of results. Another one, I don't remember which video it was, but I had to Google fat girls wrestling in mud. And that was a dark time for me. Anyway, I don't want people to know I'm Googling this stuff, man. The solution is quite simple. I just keep NordVPN running in the background. I don't notice any difference in my internet speed, and everything I do is kept secret from my internet service provider and the people I live with. But that ain't just it. Nord is punking other VPNs with their new feature, Threat Protection. It protects against malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads. I've stolen this graphic because the cartoons I make, well, let's be honest, Nord wouldn't pay me for this. And get this, you don't even need to be using the VPN for threat protection to work. You can just toggle the setting and be much safer online. Protect your files, your credit card info, and most importantly, your internet browsing with Nord. If you're interested, you can click my link nordvpn.com scamboli for a big discount. Thanks for watching. Peace.